Okay, rolling. All right, this is an interview in Woodstock, New York, the 28th of July, 2003, um, approximately 11.30 a.m. The interviewers are Mike Russert and Wayne Clark. Could you give me your full name, date of birth, and place of birth, please? All right. Uh, I'm Samuel J. Butler. I was born in Uptown Manhattan. Well, I guess it wouldn't be considered Uptown, 145th Street and Convent Avenue, which is now Harlem. And uh, uh, we moved then to 125th Street in Harlem, which, you, which at that time Harlem was segregated with all the west side was white and all the, the east side of 5th Avenue was, was black. Uh, but I was born July 14th, 19, 1917. As I said in, in, in uh, 145th Street and Convent Avenue okay. in, in, in Manhattan. What was your uh, educational background prior to entering service? Uh, I went to um, uh, school in, in, in Harlem, uh, and then we moved up to Inwood, which is uh, where the end of the A-Line at 27th Street and uh, Sherman Avenue, which is a, a few blocks from the, the, uh, uh, the A-Line last station, 27th Street. Mm -hmm. And uh, I went to high school there. I went to George Washington High School at uh, 192nd Street and wa in Washington Heights and graduated there. That was my, my uh, education, graduated high school, graduate George Washington High School in, in, in Manhattan. Okay. Um, <clears throat> could you tell me uh, where you were and what you recall about your feelings when you heard about Pearl Harbor? Uh, yes. I was, uh, I, I was um, in, in, a, in a movie at the time. And we came out of the movie and we found out Pearl Harbor had been bombed. Mm -hmm. And we were so surprised because we didn't think that, that anybody was, that they had peace negotiation going on between Japan and this country at that time. But we didn't think anything of, of it that, that someone would attack us before war was declared. Mm -hmm. And we, we thought it was a, a terrible act to attack us in what we considered peacetime. Okay. Um, and we were surprised that everybody wasn't uh, wasn't prepared at all on Sunday morning. Uh -huh. Did you uh, enlist or were you drafted? I was drafted. <clears throat> okay. Uh, I was deferred because two other brothers of mine were were uh, were uh, already in the service. One was up in Greenland, and uh, the other eventually went to France. But uh, one was in the Air Corps, and the other was in the Army. And they deferred me because I was the chief. Um, money maker, put it that way, for my mother since my father wasn't working during the depression. And so they deferred me until 1942, which was a year later. Mm -hmm. And in, in uh, December 7th, uh, said December, yeah, December 7th, I received the notice to report January 7th uh, for induction. And uh, I went to Fort Dix in New Jersey mm -hmm. for my basic. Okay. Uh, what kind of, did you just have the standard basic? Yes, yeah, standard you... basic. And then they, they gave you evaluation tests. Mm -hmm. And they, they uh, evaluated me as a, as a clerk. And I went down to uh, uh, camp, what was uh, <coughs> Camp Lee in, in, uh, in Virginia, near Petersburg. I think mm -hmm. it's Fort Lee now. Yes. And I, was, I went to clerk school there. And the only interesting thing I had there is, uh, after I got out of the school, I was on KP. And uh, while we were washing dishes, a dish broke in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the water. And being a smart aleck who just came out of clerk school, I said, I read that this is to be considered wear and tear if it breaks in the hot water with anybody, without anybody dropping it or anything. So. The, the uh, sergeant there, the mess sergeant, said, fine, Sam, you don't have to pay for it, because all it would have been in was 50 cents. But I had to be a smart aleck, so I was appointed for uh, God, uh, to a KP for three nights, for guard duty for three days. And that was the reason why after my basic training was done, and they offered me a job in the, in the outfit, I could have stayed home, 
and taught what they called the hillbillies who didn't know which handle uh, you use on a hammer that's or, or show them how to point the gun and I would have been in, in, in uh, Fort Lee for the remainder of my service probably but I was so mad at the outfit that I took my chances and went overseas. Uh, after we left there, we went to uh, Camp uh, Shandaken, uh, which is near Pittsburgh, uh, for uh, reevaluation, and, and they uh, put teeth in my mouth because I didn't have the four points that you're supposed to have for uh, uh, for eating to be uh, for the army. So they had to put uh, some false teeth in, which were completely worthless. Anyway. Uh, we went down then to Newport News when the when the um, uh, evaluation was finished and they decided what outfit you were to go into. And we went down to Newport News as the POE, the port of... And I was surprised there that it was like a prison. You had the walls all around it with guards walking around the walls. We were fighting for freedom, but they lined to, to go on to the boat uh, you were between lines of, of uh, uh, soldiers with machine guns, or, or uh, uh, not machine guns, but automatic weapons. And we went on the boat, bo the Mariposa was the boat. Mm -hmm. It was formerly an excursion that went between San Francisco and uh, uh, Hawaii. And all we had for protection was the plane overhead until we got out of the 12 miles. Then because they figured it was a fast boat, we were not in a convoy, we were all by ourselves and just ran to, uh, uh, I'm, I'm saying ran, mm -hmm. went as quickly as possible to uh, uh, Fort Lyote, Lyote, which is right near Casablanca. And we landed there uh, late in June of, of 43. At that time, the, the African campaign was winding down, and uh, uh, we established our base in, in Fort Leote, which was near Casablanca. I remember take, uh, how they took a shower there. They had overhead pipes, and the companies were all stark naked, of course, for uh, 250 or 300 men like that, and you'd get under the, the overhead pipes, and they'd blow a whistle, you, you, you wet yourself up, they blow a whistle, you got out, and you, you soaped yourself up. You went under again and got clean. I think the whole thing was done in six minutes. <laughs> there was more beer than, than water available there. Now, what kind of unit were you assigned to there? Uh, it, as I said, it was, a, it was a, 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 a headquarters company. Okay. Yeah. And uh, from, from uh, uh, there, we moved over to, to Palermo, uh, Sicily following the invasion of Sicily. We were always just behind the front enough to get uh, the, the uh, battle uh, stars for it, but never actually in combat. Mm -hmm. uh, we, were in Cons uh, we were in Palermo, we were in Catania, and uh, eventually, uh, after nine months, we moved up the boot uh, to Naples. Uh, to Naples in Italy, mm -hmm. and uh, we stayed there. Uh, what was that? Another, uh, from uh, nine months. From um, for, uh, we were there till uh, August fifteenth, nineteen forty-four. We made the invasion of southern France, and we came uh, a couple of days later. I think it shows it. Here, but anyway, we came a couple of days later. They they landed on August 15th, and we were there August 18th. Mm -hmm. uh, we landed in, in uh, Saint Tropez in southern France, and then uh, the advance company, which I was part of, and at that time the the because there was only a small group, the officers and and the uh, enlisted men ate together, and we uh, took a restaurant, Amé Fritz. Probably meaning friends of the Germans. I mean, in French, in French it would mean that. And they, they, uh, we took over that restaurant, and I ran that restaurant uh, from the, the, the day we arrived in there, as I said, 
August 8th, 17th and 18th, that's when the liberation was going on in, in Marseille. And there was fighting outside in the street when, when, when we were setting up the restaurant and the headquarters for the main group to come in. Uh -huh. I ran that restaurant for, for two weeks until the main body came in. And when the main body came in, they divided the, the officers into the restaurant and the men were put into the enlisted mess. At that time, I was transferred from there to running a hotel. Now, did you have any problem getting supplies or food or...? Well, that's what, that's what, we, that's what the, the idea was. We opened up the Port of Marseille, and the food and everything came into the Port of Marseille. Mm -hmm. So we didn't have any trouble. In fact, uh, what we did, with the consent of the officers, of course, we exchanged army food, which we were tired of, for French native food. And that made the restaurant a very interesting place for the, for the uh, enlisted men. Before, before we were living on sea rations, you know, all canned mm -hmm. food. Mm -hmm. And here you had, in fact, we had the, the French chefs making rabbit, making chicken, and all, all, the, all the fresh food for us. And we were giving them the sea rations mm -hmm. for it. So you had French chefs? Yeah, we had French chefs. So all we had to do was tell the French chefs what to do. Uh, one of the reasons they closed the restaurant because the French chefs had a cat and they allowed the cat in the kitchen according to army law you can't have a, a cat in the kitchen well they, they, they said would you rather have a cat in the kitchen or mice in the kitchen but that's another story <laughs> <laughs> now how long did you run the, the hotel? Uh, I ran the hotel uh, until we moved up to uh, Lyon Mm -hmm. And then I ran the restaurant there in Lyon. I, I, I never ran the restaurant. I told the chefs what to do. I, was the, I, ne I didn't do the cooking myself. Mm -hmm. I told the French chefs what to cook for the American forces and uh, keep them uh, in, in line with army regulations. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I did the same thing in, 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 uh, in uh, Lyon. Uh, the Grand Hotel in Lyon we had our headquarters at. Uh, and... Uh, uh, then we weathered, we wintered in, in Dijon, and we, uh, uh, there I qualified for the, um, for the um, Battle of the Bulge. But I was told that they were only taking those real goof-offs from the outfit because the outfit wanted to hold its own uh, membership as much as possible. Mm -hmm. And I had been with the outfit from, from uh, uh, Casablanca, so... Uh, they figured I was needed there and they only sent men they didn't want to the Battle of the Bulge. Mm -hmm. Then we moved up to, to Nancy where we met up with the 7th Army and uh, we ended up in, in Heidelberg after we were in Mannheim all, beca all before the, the uh, uh, all before B-Day uh, which we celebrated in Heidelberg. If you want to see some of the pictures, it shows the pictures of, of the different places where we were. Sure. Okay. Now, I noticed uh, in your interview form, you uh, noted that you met two very famous persons. Oh, yes. Persons. Yes. I was, I was in charge of the VIP uh, hotel. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, uh, you know, uh, VIP means yes. very important people. I, I interviewed uh, uh, Marlon... Uh, Marlon Dietrich, uh, she came to entertain the troops, and so did Madeline Carroll. Now you met both of them. Personally. I met both of them personally. What, what was your reaction, reaction was to, either, uh, to both of them? They looked like they were over the hill, and and, and uh, much uh, much past their prime. But I, it, it was true in both cases mm -hmm. that they they were not. And, and anyway, they didn't have the makeup on that when I met them. They were just ordinary people, and they just looked like ordinary people. They did not look like the glamorous stars that they were on the screen, which are probably is true with, with most of them. Mm -hmm. uh, the uh, Marlon Dietrich, I, I, I met in, in, in Germany, in, in, uh, in uh, Mannheim, and uh, 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 Madeline Carroll was in um, uh, Dijon to entertain the troops there. How did the troops react to, to them? Oh, they were glad to see him. Mm -hmm. um, I, I know uh, Marlon Dietrich sang that, uh, what's that one, At the Corner, Waiting at the Corner. Oh, uh, it's a very famous German yes. song. Lily Marlene. 
Lily Marlene. She sang oh. Lily Marlene and yes. she got, got great cheers for mm -hmm. her. I don't remember what, what Madeline Carroll did because I didn't see the, the performance myself, mm -hmm. but I didn't meet her when I, when I booked her at the hotel. Mm -hmm. Were there any other famous personages that you... Well, the only other famous persons I met, I met General uh, Lebrecht. That's uh, L-E-C-R-E-C. -E -E he was, uh, when, when, we, uh, when they took Marseille, the American troops did not take Marseille. Mm -hmm. The free French took Marseille for their own, uh, uh, to help the, the, the boost their feelings. Mm -hmm. And also the, the, uh, the uh, population there uh, took over the, the port once the Americans had sealed off the corridor there above them so that the German troops were pushed ahead. And all they really had to do was, was flush out Germans that were hiding in the hotels. In fact, our, AP, our uh, MPs had to protect the Germans from being lynched when they flushed them out of their hiding places. Okay. Um, were you aware at all uh, on your way through Europe of the concentration camps or no, I never saw the camps? No, I never saw like the that. concentration never saw camps, things. no. Um, I was away. Uh, I was aware of the of uh, some of the same kind. kind of poverty in France. Uh, not as bad. It seemed the the French were collaborating more, and and they didn't seem to suffer as much. That was my my feeling. Okay. Um, when were you uh, discharged? I was discharged in November uh, 11, 1945. Mm -hmm. uh, well, oh, I'm sorry. That was from uh, uh, the... Um, I was discharged at Fort Dix in, in, in uh, Jersey, but uh, we landed in, in, in Boston there. I forget the port there. But we landed in Boston, and the trip was, was terrible. We had an old uh, Liberty ship that, 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 that was riding on top of the waves and, and in November the, the water is rough coming across and uh, we only, uh, everybody, the, their whole crew was in the latrine at the same time mm -hmm. <laughs> and I felt fine until I went down there. <laughs> Do you recall um, where you were and what, uh, if you had any reaction to the death of President Roosevelt? Uh, no, no. Uh, I don't remember that at all. I do remember VE Day a lot mm -hmm. more. Okay. We celebrated that a lot more. It, it, uh, was it May 8th in 1945? We celebrated that a lot more than... Mm -hmm. uh, we only heard that over the... Um, uh, through the Yankee uh, paper, the mm -hmm. Stars and Stripes. Where were you when you celebrated VE Day? I told you, in Mannheim, in Germany. Mannheim. Uh, yes, okay. Yeah, Mannheim, Germany or Heidelberg. Uh -huh. Then uh, we came back, we came back to, to Nice for uh, 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 recreation and you know and and then we were moved to uh, Reims uh, to process the troops uh, through to to J Japan and we were to go as the last uh, group to Japan and naturally we, we uh, before we got scheduled to go the the atom bomb was dropped what was your was reaction all. when you heard about that? oh we were very glad we felt sorry for the Japanese people, but we were very glad for, glad for ourselves. Mm -hmm. okay. Because we had figured that, that uh, if we got two weeks in the, this country before going to Japan, we would have been lucky. I remember the act reaction when I landed in, uh, uh, near Casablanca. I met soldiers who were, the, who were through the African campaign, and they said to you, give up any hopes of going back. We've got a little piece of Africa here. Hitler has all of Europe, and we've got to conquer all that yet. Do you really think you could make that and, li and live through it? And a lot of them had that attitude that you live for the day because you're never going to go back home anyway. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, after you were discharged, did you make use of the GI Bill? No, I didn't. Because I had a job waiting for me, and I went back to it before I lost it. So you never used the 5220 club? No, I didn't. Okay. No. Um, did you uh, join any veterans organizations? Uh, not until I got up here. I was too busy making a living. Okay, what are you active in now? Uh, 
I'm active in the, in, in the Woodstock VFW. I was a uh, post commander uh, for uh, nine years. I'm now a, v a senior vice commander. And, uh, oh, I, 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 I think Thomas Sully told you this. We got this hat for veterans. Why don't you hold it up in front of the camera? All right. Now, wh what okay. did you get that hat for? Uh, bringing in more veterans, uh, uh, more members uh, in, in 99. I was a quartermaster. And I was the post commander. And I got all these guys to join our VFW uh, outfit, and we both got those hats for being the first in the state of New York. Oh, wow, okay. It was also a help from the, 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 the recruiter from District, District 2. Yes, that's true. Okay. Did you uh, keep in contact with anyone that you served with? Uh, uh, not. Uh, occasionally I got letters from them, but we never had a reunion. Mm -hmm. After all, we, we, we were a chair corps, yes, and a chair right. corps doesn't have the same, uh, uh, what's the, uh, camaraderie, camaraderie mm -hmm. as, as uh, men who actually saw action. Mm -hmm. The nearest action I saw is, uh, in Marseille, we, uh, I landed there with the uh, advanced company, and setting up the headquarters there in the restaurant, there was fighting in the streets and in front of me. I could see, I could look down the window and see the, the, the armored vehicles uh, both from the Germans and the French fighting in there, but actually myself, I never came into any con con combat. Okay. Um, you have a photograph of yourself. Would you sure. show us that, please? If you just hold it up right under your chin, kind yeah. of. <laughs> okay. Okay, and the arrow is pointing to you. Right. All right, now where was that photograph taken and when? And that was taken in Reims okay, in 1945 before we broke up. Okay, all right, thank you. And you had some other things you Yes, you yes, into. here. This is the, the diploma I, uh, I received from the uh, uh, Republic of France, I guess you yeah. score, uh, for the time we spent during the liberation of, of France. I was there for the parade, the libera liberating parade in Marseille. Oh. I especially remember the naked women. <laughs> okay, got it. Well, they 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 uh, made those women who collaborated with the with the uh, uh, with the Germans you march put, naked. You put that down. Uh, oh, really? Yeah. 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 No, you, no, you, you can put that down. Oh. Um, did they shave their heads or yes, anything? Yes. Yes. Uh... Yes, in their public hair. Uh huh. Uh, so they paraded them through town like that. Uh, paraded them through town like that. Mm -hmm. As a disgrace mm -hmm. for. Uh, of course, I never knew. We never knew whether whether these stories were true. I mean, that, like that they were collaborators, or that whether they took their neighbor's word for it or not. Mm -hmm. But uh, I, I know I saw that. I remember that part of it. And as I said, I remember the the, the, the French uh, marching with it. We didn't join the parades. We were just uh, we were just uh, observers because the the French took over the uh, the. Uh, the, I think, think Paris was liberated in the same way by, mm -hmm. by the French themselves to, to uh, make them feel better. Uh, there are pictures here. Oh, here. This is a map of the invasion of southern France showing how, they, how their forces came through. I don't know whether you can take a picture of that like yep. that. Okay. Okay, got it. All right, well, thank you. How do you think uh, your uh, military time changed or affected your life? I don't know that. It gave me a better feeling about uh, the country itself. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't like going into the service, but when, once I got in it, I, I enjoyed most of my time there. And for me, it wasn't too bad because, as I say, I didn't kill anybody or nobody actually shot at me personally. So, in, in, in looking back on it, in, in, in the, from here, 
it would be a, a pleasant experience because I saw places I never would go see otherwise. Of course, it wasn't under the conditions I would have enjoyed, mm -hmm. but it was a, a change from the, the uh, everyday run-of-the-mill that, that I, uh, I experienced otherwise. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you.